For those who are not completely familiar with the scale of the terror of the Eastern Front during the Second World War, it's useful to paint a comparison. When the British and Americans invaded France in June 1944 on D-Day, they took with them 200,000 airborne and assault troops. The world was indeed watching. What is often less recognised, however, is that the scale of that invasion actually paled almost into insignificance compared to the apocalyptic battles that had been raging on the Eastern Front since 1941. When Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa in June of that year, he did so with four and a half million German troops advancing into Soviet territories. First through Soviet-occupied Poland, into the Baltic states, and then with three massive army groups, supported also by Romanians and Finns, towards Moscow and other key cities. On a battle arena this vast, it is problematic to try and identify the key moments of the war, but there are probably three phases that do stand out. Many military historians regard the battle before Moscow in 1941 as a key point beyond which it became almost impossible for the Germans to achieve total victory. This is open to debate. The objectives of Operation Barbarossa had not been to take principal cities, but rather to destroy the Russian armies in the field. When Guderian's panzer troops were advancing towards Moscow, Hitler turned them south to enable them to make a massive pincer attack surrounding hundreds of thousands of Russian troops. Yes, had he not done so, Moscow would have been taken. But Napoleon took Moscow in 1812, and that did not force the Russians to surrender. There was no guarantee it would have done in 1941. In 1942-43, the Battle of Stalingrad marked the high water watermark of Nazism. 450,000 German troops advanced towards the city, and the 6th Army, Germany's best equipped and most potent fighting unit, was drawn into a bloody street fight. This enabled the Russians to launch a massive counteroffensive, the first time they used blitzkrieg tactics of their own. They encircled the 6th Army and destroyed them. Of the 450,000 that went in, only 10,000 came out. This catastrophic defeat, however, did not mark the end of the Third Reich. In June of 1943, they launched one last massive armoured assault. Indeed, it was the largest armoured assault that Germany launched in the entire war. Around the Kursk salient, they attacked with the objective of once again surrounding and destroying massive Russian armies. This time, however, there were delays and they were unable to keep their plans secret. The Russians were waiting for them. The Russians had built massive defences and earthworks to stop tax advances and, for the first time, Russian artillery was able to come to terms with German tanks. The assault petered out and then the Russians were able to launch a massive counter-offensive of their own. The defeat at Kursk did indeed mean that German defeat was inevitable. However, it still took almost another two years before Germany finally surrendered in Berlin in 1945. The scale, terror and tragedy of the Eastern Front is unprecedented. There is nothing quite on that scale in the whole of human history. The consequences lasted well into the future, with Europe being divided for more than 50 years after the end of the Second World War. Two dictatorships, two ideologies and two peoples struggling to overcome the other in a battle that was genuinely life or death. The terror and tragedy of this period is a warning to us all, but is a fascinating piece of human history.